Few ancient Greek city-states were as reputable as Corinth, one of the wealthiest in all of Hellas. First signs of activity appeared around 6500 BC. This is known mainly because Neolithic pottery was found. Um, but anyway, it appears that the city was destroyed around 2000 BC. 1100 years later, it was resettled by the Dorians, the more warlike northern mountainous Greeks that moved down into the southern half that was, well, previously occupied by the Mycenaeans. Early in its history, the city of Corinth was ruled by an aristocratic Doric clan known as the Bacchiadae. This clan elected a ruler known as the Pratanus, as well as the Polemarchos, who would lead the army. Corinth eventually became a united state under the rule of the Bacchiadae, and in 733, the colonies of Corsera and Syracuse were founded. In 657 BC, the Bacchiadae were exiled by the Polemarch Sipselius, who became the first tyrant of Corinth. This fulfilled an earlier prophecy that was put forward by the Oracle of Delphi, according to the historian Herodotus. Sipselius was very well liked by the people of Corinth, so much so that he never needed a personal bodyguard and eventually died of natural causes. According to Aristotle, quote, Sipselius of Corinth had made a vow that if he became master of the city, he would offer to Zeus the entire property of the Corinthians. Accordingly, he commanded them to make a return of their possessions, unquote. Sipselius' son, Periander, succeeded him after his death in 627 BC. Although considered one of the seven wise men of Greece, his family was extremely troubled. Periander killed his wife and then exiled his son, the Corsera, who was later killed by the locals. Classical era Corinth was a very wealthy city-state with a major black figure pottery export. The Temple of Aphrodite was a major institution in Corinth, well known for its temple prostitutes, the Heteras, the most famous being Laius, who would charge large sums for her favors. The Doric order of architecture was developed in Corinth, greatly more extravagant than the plain Doric and Ionic orders. This was a reflection of the great amount of wealth possessed by the city-state. Corinth took part in the Greco-Persian Wars as part of the Hellenic League. To the Battle of Thermopylae, they contributed 400 soldiers, as well as 40 ships to the Battle of Salamis. 5,000 hoplites were sent to Botea as well. In respects to Corinthian hoplites, the Corinthian-style helmet was used by the citizen soldiers of the namesake city. Corinth also took part in the Peloponnesian and Corinthian Wars. Corinth fell under the control of Alexander the Great by 332 BC. The territory owned by Corinth was used often as battlefields between the Macedonians and Hellenistic forces. This Macedonian possession ended in 243 BC when Aratus of Sicyon successfully won independence for Corinth, which then joined the Achaean League. When war was declared between Rome and the Achaean League, Corinth was successfully besieged by Lucius Munius, who then proceeded to slaughter all the city's men and sell all the women and children into slavery. Afterwards, Corinth was largely uninhabited until resettled by Julius Caesar in 44 AD.